Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming Raspad 3. Now the name on this is a bit confusing because it doesn't support the Raspberry Pi 3. I'm sure it would work with some different adapters, but this is actually specifically designed for the Raspberry Pi 4. And basically what this does is turn your Raspberry Pi 4 into a fully functional 10 inch portable tablet. Now I was lucky enough to receive an early unit and the software isn't fully complete but I do have an operating system that'll work with this. I plan on doing another video once they get Raspad OS up and running for the new Raspad 3 but it does work well on the original Raspad which I have done a review on in the past. But since we're running a Raspberry Pi 4 in here you can basically install any operating system. Now getting the touch working is a different story on some operating systems but if you want to go with something like Raspberry Pi OS you don't have to do any setup at all. The touch just works. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box. We're going to take a look at the Raspad 3. We'll do a quick assembly, and then we'll take a look at this thing in action. So first up, we have a user manual. It's got all the instructions we need on installing the operating system and assembling the unit. And right underneath that, we have the Raspad 3 itself. This is a 10.1 inch touchscreen display, built-in rechargeable battery. We have some external ports over here, like full-size Ethernet and full-size HDMI. Around the other side, we have our volume and brightness control, plus our power button. We'll take a closer look at this in just a second, but I wanted to get to the end of this box. And it looks like we just have all of our accessories to get this thing assembled and charged up. So we have our power supply, ethernet adapter, USB adapter, or HDMI adapters, everything we need to get this thing put together. It also comes with some heat sinks and a fan. So yeah, I mean, putting this together doesn't require any soldering at all. All you really need to do is throw a Raspberry Pi inside of here. And by the way, this does not come with a Raspberry Pi 4, so you will have to provide your own. So yeah, this is already looking pretty awesome. For the display here, it's an IPS screen at 1280 by 800. It's a 10.1 inch screen with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Over on the left hand side here, we have a full size ethernet port, three USB 3.0 ports, full size HDMI out so we can use dual screens, HDMI out and the built in 10.1 inch screen, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and our power in. This is gonna allow us to power the Raspberry Pi 4 and charge the battery at the same exact time. We don't exactly get full access to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi, but they have left a slot here that we can slide a ribbon cable inside of just in case you need to get that access. You'll have it over that ribbon cable and we have space for it here. And finally, on the right hand side, we have our micro SD card slot, power, volume, and brightness buttons, plus we have a battery indicator. And they're claiming three to five hours of battery life with continuous use on the Raspberry Pi 4 and the built in 10.1 inch screen. So yeah, I'm actually pretty excited about getting in here. I want to go ahead and pop this back off. It's held down by five screws. I've already removed them so we could get this off easily. And the fan will mount to the back plate here. So let's go ahead and move in a little closer. So over on the left hand side, we have an external micro SD card along with our buttons. We have dual speakers here and our main board. This is going to control the LCD. It's also going to allow us to get that HDMI and USB out of the side. And up here we have our built-in battery pack. I think it's four 18650 cells and they're claiming three to five hours of battery life. Overall, looks very easy to assemble. We have the mount for the Raspberry Pi 4. It's gonna mount right here. And they've provided us with all of the cabling we need to get this all set up. So there's no soldering whatsoever. The kit I received did not include a Raspberry Pi 4. I'm gonna be adding one of my own. This is just the Raspberry Pi 4, four gigabyte model. It's going to mount right here and everything's just going to plug in. They've made this super easy so pretty much anybody can assemble this. The very first thing I need to do is grab the SD card adapter. It's going to plug right into the Pi. It's got a little ribbon cable on it and that's going to go right to the left hand daughter board. Everything lines up really nicely but I do want to mount this Pi down at least with two screws before I get started. So I've got the Pi secure. I didn't put all the screws in it yet just in case I need to remove any. But the next thing I need to do is go ahead and plug in my Ethernet. One end's going to plug right into the Raspberry Pi 4. The other side's going to plug into the main board of the Raspad. Same thing with the USB 3.0 cable. I'm going with the lower USB 3.0 port on the Raspberry Pi 4 to the main board. And this is going to enable those external USB ports. Next up, we need to get video into this board. So I'm just going to be using the angled micro HDMI adapters that they include with the kit. One side's going to plug into the Pi, the other side's going to plug into the board. And this is going to give us both of those HDMI adapters. One of them is going to feed video directly to the built-in LCD. The other one's going to feed video into the external full-size HDMI. So far, everything's going pretty smoothly. I think the next thing I need to do is plug in the external micro SD card adapter using that ribbon cable. And I inserted that into the Pi before I mounted it down so we have access to it. 
and this is going to give us an external SD card slot. That way we don't have to take this apart every time we want to swap out the card. So I'm pretty sure I'm almost done here. I just need to get power to the Raspberry Pi using the USB Type-C cable. One end is going to go into the USB Type-C port on the Pi. The other end is going to go into the main board, and this is going to feed battery power to the Pi and external power when we're plugged into a power source. So yeah, I mean, that was pretty easy. We're basically all set up here. I just need to put in the extra screws for the Raspberry Pi 4 to hold it inside of the case. And I will be adding the included fan because these Pi 4s do get really hot and this is in an enclosed space. So I've just installed the included heat sinks, one for the CPU, one for the RAM module, and one for the USB Type-C module. I've also installed the fan. It's going to mount to the back half of the case and the power is going to plug right into the main board. And since this is a tablet, it does have an accelerometer included, but it needs to mount to the Raspberry Pi 4. This is an accelerometer shim that's going to go right onto the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi 4. You kind of just push it down. That way, when all the software is set up correctly with Raspad OS, you can rotate the screen just by turning the whole unit. So overall, assembly on this unit was super easy. I mean, you could do this in five or six minutes if you've never done it before. It's just all plug and play. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and boot this up. I just hold the power button for two or three seconds. It should start the boot process. I'm using Raspberry Pi OS from the official website. This is not modified whatsoever. And as soon as I get a working version of Raspad OS for the Raspad 3, I will be doing another video because there's a lot of great stuff built into that operating system that takes advantage of this touch screen and that small accelerometer that we have built in. But as you can see, if you just want to install Raspberry Pi OS, touch is working right out of the box. But one thing we don't get pre-installed with Raspberry Pi OS is an on-screen keyboard, and you can actually install one really easy through Terminal. It's just the Matchbox on-screen keyboard. I'm just going to skip through the setup process real quick. So far, so good. Everything's been working pretty well, and this little touchscreen actually works really well with Raspberry Pi OS, but I can't wait to get a hold of an operating system that really takes advantage of everything that the Raspad 3 has to offer. It's got those dual speakers built in, and they actually sound pretty good. We do have a dedicated volume and brightness control over on the right-hand side. So we can go up and down with the volume. And if we wait a second for the volume to clear out, we can press the brightness button. And that'll bring up our brightness control for the built-in LCD. Set it 100 right now. I can lower it on down. So I've just went ahead and installed that Matchbox on-screen keyboard. If I go to Accessories, I can turn it on from here. That way we have a keyboard and we don't have to plug anything in. It actually works really well, and you can set it up so it's always on top of all of the screens. I usually just leave them like this so I can swap back and forth. But we're going to head over to the Raspad website. I'll go to Downloads. And here they're offering Raspad OS 2.5, but unfortunately after downloading it and installing it a few times, it will not expand on the Raspberry Pi 4. And if I do go ahead and manually expand it and then boot it up, I'm running into USB issues. It's all software related here and they got a little work to do on this. Hopefully in the next few days, they do put out an update that'll work properly with this because I'd like to test out all of the features of the Raspad 3. So I've just plugged in a little wireless keyboard and mouse here. You can alternate between the touch screen and your keyboard and mouse if you really want to. We're going to head over to YouTube real quick. This actually would be pretty awesome with the newest version of Android that's compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4. The developers have actually enabled hardware acceleration and it performs much better. It'd be pretty cool to put this on here and check it out. If you're interested in seeing a video like that, just let me know in the comments below. But even as a little portable media consumption device, this thing would be pretty awesome. I'm really glad that they have support for the Raspberry Pi 4 here because the Raspberry Pi 4 does perform much better than the old Pis and especially in emulation. So we're going to head over here to ReDream, just test out a Dreamcast emulator. And I'm not exactly sure if the touch screen does work with ReDream. Looks like it does. That's, that's pretty cool. I'll just skip right ahead into a little bit of gameplay. I just have a wireless controller connected to the Raspberry Pi 4, and as you can see, Dreamcast runs really great using ReDream on the Pi 4. So yeah, even a little portable emulation system is totally possible with the Raspad 3. So yeah, this thing is turning out to be pretty awesome. I can't wait to get my hands on some software that really utilizes everything that's included with the Raspad 3. 
I think we have plenty of external I.O., brightness control, volume control, and external SD. If you really want to get to the GPIO pins, you can use a cable. We have that cut out in the back here. But one of my favorite things about this whole unit is the ease of assembly. We have 7 cables to plug in and 13 screws. That's including the fan cable and the fan screws. My son, who's 6 years old, could put this together in less than 10 minutes. But that's it for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Definitely keep an eye on the channel if you're interested in checking out more about the RASPAD. Waiting on a new operating system update, and I will be throwing a video out very soon. And as for Android, if the interest is there, let me know in the comments below, and I'll do a video on that. But like always, thanks for watching.